Hello and welcome to another Twisty Customs video. Today we're talking about blowback units and later on we'll do some comparisons and see what effect they have on the chronograph. We'll jump right in and take a quick look at this standard Tokyo Marie 5.1 blowback unit. This is from the stainless model which is white silver and it's pretty cheap metal. You can see the casting uh, artifacts. Uh, it has a regular TM piston with a cupped o-ring at the end there and it's nothing particularly special to write home about. It does have a threaded hole on top that the regular adjustable rear sights on a Tokyo Marui 5.1 high capper will screw into. Interestingly on this one which is from a 1911 it also has that threaded hole on top so you could use the 1911 in the uh, TM 5.1. It has exactly the same piston and uh, o-ring there. There is one subtle difference though and that is on top here. You will see there is a plastic piece filling this little slot. This plastic piece is known as a nozzle smoother. Indeed the underside of it is slightly concave to accommodate the nozzle as it slides back and forward. If you are fiddling around with these and you're installing one you must make sure that you get this the right way up because if you put it in upside down you will find that the blowback unit will not locate correctly inside the slide. There is one subtle difference that you will notice between these two different blowback units. On the 1911 there are only two prongs at the front. On the TM high capper there is an additional prong just here. So frequently if you are purchasing a replacement blowback unit if it claims to be a high capper slash 1911 you may find that it has this prong and that it will not fit in your gun. You will have to figure that out for yourselves as to whether it will fit and sometimes it necessitates chopping off that prong. Incidentally it's also the case that on some installations you may find that this back rear prong is also not accommodated in your slide. I'm looking at you Nova with your uh, fake firing pins. Um, if you have such an arrangement you might also need to file off that part of the BBU to get that to fit in your slide as well. Nevertheless there is nothing particularly striking about this unit from TM for the 1911 and I have upgraded mine to use this Edge Ultra Lightweight blowback unit. It is ridiculously light especially compared to the uh, TM model it does of course make a big difference in terms of the amount of mass that you're moving when your slide is moving backwards and forwards. Less mass means less gas required to move it backwards and of course less recoil spring to pull it back into battery. This one does have the extra prong and it does fit in my uh, Nova Springfield Armoury unit. This is the one that takes the uh, regular interior chassis for a 1911 so it does fit without any problems and I also don't have a fake firing pin so there's no need for me to remove this prong. You'll notice that this is a regular round o-ring rather than the cup style used in the TMs and the piston is cut away quite severely. You can see the, the screw inside that holds the piston head in place and together that makes for quite a lightweight or indeed an ultra lightweight blowback unit. I've enjoyed using this, it seems to do a very good job in my uh, Springfield Armoury 1911 but today we're going to explore some differences between them. No conversation about BBUs would be complete without also having a look at the nozzles themselves. Here we have a Tokyo Marui standard nozzle that fits in both the high capper and the 1911 and this one is a Garda enhanced 
Uh, I think this one is actually sold as a 1911 model, but there is no discernible uh, external difference. If you know otherwise, do let me know. The molding injections are pretty much the same. There is a slight difference just about here, where it's uh, a bigger injection molding uh, point on the garter. But otherwise, they are ridiculously similar. Interestingly though, the TM is a very stiff, very firm plastic. If I try and compress it, there's almost no give. On the other hand, with the garter, it is much softer. And if I try and compress it, I am getting some give. Whether that is a good thing for the longevity and reliability uh, is yet to be determined, but I've had fairly good success with the enhanced garden nozzles and this is my go-to uh, replacement from stock. Why do I replace them? Well, let's have a look. If I take the regular BBU and I put the regular TM nozzle on it, you will see that there's quite a lot of give in that. It's very floppy on the O-ring. Yep. So that indicates to me there's not a great seal between the O-ring and the nozzle. Any time there isn't a great seal, I'm losing gas and decreasing gas efficiency. That gas is escaping and it's not being forced down the barrel to propel that projectile. On the other hand, if I do exactly the same with the garter nozzle, whoop, it doesn't move. I can shake it all about and there is no movement on that piston. It is still incredibly smooth. I'm not feeling any bumps. I'm not feeling any grind or grittiness in that movement. So it seems to be doing a fairly good job of sealing. It's not stiff, indicating that it's too stiff. If it was too stiff, then again, uh, it's gonna force gas out the wrong way and it's not gonna propel my rounds as efficiently as it could be doing. So that's an example on the TM. Let's see what the difference is with the uh, Edge Ultra Lightweight. And I put the nozzle in. And again, that's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty loose. Not quite as loose as it was on the Garda. In fact, when I get to about there, I could feel it stick a little bit more, but it's not, again, not what I would call a good seal. So when I take the garden nozzle, yeah, I can feel that O-ring as it travels along the length of the nozzle and it's feeling like it is making a decent seal. The great news is there's no grittiness, there's no bumping, there's no stickiness. Uh, along that path, it is very, very smooth. That is exactly what we're looking to achieve because we don't want anything getting in the way of this nozzle traveling smoothly along the length of that piston, either on the way out, propelled by gas, or on the return, propelled by the spring. So, Another big step in improving the efficiency of your pistol, and in turn the FPS, is replacing your nozzle. Even replacing a nozzle on a standard BBU will make that difference. Not all BBUs have an O-ring that is going to work with every nozzle. You may need to change that O-ring. You undo the screw on the piston head, take the piston head off, you can change that O-ring. It's going to be something like a 13.5 or 14 mil uh, diameter O-ring with, uh, I don't know how thick it is, 2 mil, 2.5 mil. It depends on the piston that you're using. Some people like Poseidon or Nine Ball will provide you with a new piston head including an O-ring and they generally work quite well together. And you can buy spare O-rings from your local airsoft store and pay through the nose or you can go to your uh, local DIY store and buy a full o-ring kit for just a I don't know ten twenty dollars that'll give you a lot of choices so you can find exactly the right one but that o-ring is crucial to the gas efficiency of your gun 
So, those are three blowback units um, that we've had a quick look at along with those two different nozzles. For today's comparison testing, I'm going to be using the garter nozzle and we should be using it on the 1911 blowback unit on the edge ultra lightweight blowback unit and we will also be testing a new toy that came into stock here in Hong Kong quite recently the Volante Stratos BBU now some of you are thinking what is this guy on this BBU is a high flow high capacity blowback unit it is specifically designed actually for all steel airsoft pistols that is it's designed to move a lot of weight when it triggers that slide to move backwards this is because companies like FPR and sometimes Nova or Prime uh, make complete steel versions of their airsoft pistols and you need a lot of gas to move them first off let's have a look if you buy a Garda or a replacement TM BBU, you'll probably get it in a plastic bag. The edge comes in a nice custom made plastic box, but there's nothing particularly special about it. This is the first time I've bought a BBU that comes in its own presentation case. Pretty nice, huh? Let's open her up and see what we've got. Oop. Well, that's something for a start. I've never received that with a BBU before, but here we see the complete exploded parts diagram for the Stratos blowback unit. And they claim that it is for a 1911 slash high capper. So as with any real 1911 blowback unit, we are expecting to see that slot on the top in the event that you have sights that require it. Let's take a closer look. There we go, there is that slot. Here, it's not currently filled in. What else do we have in the box? Ah, there's a screw, and that is the screw that we use at the rear to hold that into the slide. So, let's have a look. Well, there's a slightly shiny, almost gunmetal gray finish. The sides feel quite polished, but it's a bit rougher towards the front here. There's a cutaway on the bottom. That's a very interesting looking slide. Notice we don't have that prong at the front that we see on the TM. That is missing. Good. That helps with fitment. And remember that I spoke earlier about this piece not fitting in some 1911 BBUs? Well, it looks like the Volante has a very unique solution for that problem. Rather than having to file it off, there is this plastic stabilizer which comes straight off that would allow it to fit in such a slide. But if you do need to use it, the plastic clip is all that it needs because it is securing the blowback unit in that horizontal direction in the movement of the slide. So that is a very, very neat solution. We can just about see the spring inside that uh, blowback uh, inside the nozzle there and of course the big difference is is that a lot more of the nozzle is exposed the nozzle is included and that is a very very strong spring um, now it's interesting because we don't have the slot on the top that we have with all of the other BBUs for the return spring it is clearly included and incorporated somewhere and if I pull that forward you can see that this design has an internal centralized nozzle return spring and that is a very positive and very snappy return i do like that i do like that the downside of course is that i can't upgrade this um, but the whole unit is a complete replacement for any other bbu so for our testing today we'll be using the garden nozzle with the tm the garden nozzle with the edge and then this complete Volante Stratos unit. That is interesting. I'm not seeing any die cast marks, but there are a couple of uh, uh, tooling marks where this has been smoothed off at the back. I assume that screw 
is to hold in the uh, spring or the works for the uh, loading nozzle and of course the hole to hold it into the slide. We do have the notch on top and we do have that threaded hole for uh, receiving the screw from adjustable rear sights. I'm looking forward to using this and seeing what impact it will have. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to start off with the regular TM and Garda nozzle. We're going to install that into our Spring Nova Springfield and in each case we will be using uh, I think this is an AIP 140% nozzle return spring. So I'll use that with both of these BBUs. I'll reassemble this slide and we'll get over to the chrono and see what the results are. <laughs> so we're back after the uh, chrono tests and uh, some surprising results there our humble little TM blowback unit with the Garda nozzle on it hit I think 293 on its first shot and hovered in the high 280s on the other hand the ultra lightweight from Edge uh, achieved a maximum 285 and hovered around 280. Our brand new Volante Stratos sadly didn't achieve much more than uh, 277. And as you can see from the videos, there was a lot of gas escaping. 
So again, this wasn't designed for this kind of pistol. It was designed to expel a lot of gas to move a very heavy, um, a very heavy slide. Ooh. And I'm going to be honest, I've broken this already. So something happened during that test. This guide piece that holds the nozzle firm has sadly already broken. And that honestly sucks. I've got to, got to say that's not, <laughs> that's not really what I was expecting. Um, but I was finding that uh, it wasn't feeding very well and it wasn't pushing the BBs into the uh, bucking very well. And occasionally it did get stuck in the bucking and wasn't returning properly. There's a lot to be said for this. I love this smooth ramp for the hammer. There's no chance for the hammer to rub against the uh, nozzle that you get in the traditional TM design. When the hammer is uh, reset, you can see the hammer comes back over that hump. And this hump is very nice, very shallow. That is great. This design with the removable prong for fitting in some 2011 frames, uh, 1911 frames, also very, very nice. And generally the build's good. They've even used the same size hex head bolt as the TM, which is a small but very nice touch. I can't honestly recommend this for most high kappa or uh, 1911 usage, not only because it broke on its first outing, <clears throat> but because uh, the gas efficiency is not designed for these pistols. Still, it was a fun little experiment. More interesting, I think, is the fact that we got slightly higher FPS out of the stock TM BBU than we did out of the uh, Edge Ultra Lightweight. I had expected the Ultra Lightweight to give us a slightly better output, but on re-examining the footage, one thing I noticed uh, across all of the various tests that I did is that the Ultra Lightweight Edge is pretty consistent. The drop-off is very slow, and after 10 to 15 shots, I'm only losing about five FPS. With the Garda nozzle in the TM BBU, what I'm seeing is less consistency. Yes, I might achieve a higher FPS at the beginning, but I'm also seeing much more uh, variance uh, amongst those shots. And after a few different tests, I was recording about a 10 FPS drop um, after 10 to 15 shots. So I'm sure that the nature of the cupped o-ring on the tm adds to its efficiency i'd love to see that within uh, a different uh, design uh, bbu maybe within the uh, ultra lightweight maybe one day i'll swap those piston heads to see if that makes any difference we've got a few more pieces that we're going to complain going to play and uh, compare in the future for our next videos until then you can draw your own conclusions about these bbus all several pieces of them and this is twisty customs signing off